Hello, welcome to Interviewing Principles and Practices. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kylie Becker and, and I'm the Communication Professor here at EAC. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with Chapter 1 in our Interviewing Principles and Practices textbook, which is called Interviewing Principles and Practices. Um, if you have the 15th edition, that's fine. If you have 13th, 14th, 12th, also fine. Pretty much the only thing different is the chapters get a little bit switched around. So you just might have to go and say, okay, well, which is the chapter we're in? Because maybe my chapter 12 is your chapter, you know, 10. So let's get started with some of the basic introduction to interviewing things. So first is some of the essential characteristics of an interview. So what makes it different from a regular interaction? So interviews are dyadic. So that means two parties. There may be more than two people. In fact, a lot of interviews nowadays do have more than two people because you might have a panel interview where you have three, four, five people interviewing a single person, or you might have a group interview where you have one or two interviewers interviewing a group of four, five, six um, applicants for a job. And if it's more than two parties, then it's a small group interaction but it is not an interview because an interview only has two parties, the interviewing party and the interviewee party. Um, interviews have a purpose and a structure. So general conversations, you may not have a purpose beyond just having a conversation and talking to someone and it's not very structured. But in an interview, you must come with a predetermined and serious purpose. So there is a reason you are here. Maybe that's for a job interview. Maybe it's for a journalistic style interview. Maybe it's for a PR interview because your company that you know, you're the PR manager for has had an oil spill and you have to take care of that with the public relations. And they have a structure. So we'll talk about the different types of structures I think here within the next couple of chapters, it'll be here in module one in the first four chapters, but there's different ways of going about interviewing. All interviews are interactional. You are sharing and exchanging roles. So you don't have one role for the entire, you know, communication interaction. You might switch them because, you know, during in a job interview in particular, you have a chance at the end to ask some questions of your own when you're being interviewed for a job. And then that kind of switches the role from you being the interviewee to you being the interviewer, talking to your interviewer about what it's like to work at that company and what kind of things you could expect. And you are exchanging uh, responsibilities. You are letting people know your feelings or your beliefs about how things should be done, you know, at work or, in the community? What are your motives for being in this interview? And of course, information is the main thing that we tend to exchange in interviews. And it involves a mutual creation and sharing of messages that come from words and nonverbal signals. So communication is always mutual. You can't not communicate, um, is the way people tend to put it, because even if you're sitting there silently, you know, with your arms across your chest, you are still communicating something, even if that something is nonverbal. So obviously, verbal signals are the things that we say and how we say them, but we also have our nonverbal signals, so like how we're dressed in this interview. You know, if we're going to a job interview, we're probably going to be dressed pretty nicely. We're going to be dressed professionally, um, unless we're applying for a job where professional dress is not required or it would be unusual or unexpected. If I'm going to a job interview to, you know, work at Burger King or Walmart or a manual labor job, I'm not going to be dressed in a suit because it wouldn't really make sense for that particular context. I would still wear something nice, but, you know, I wouldn't be in my suit or I probably wouldn't be in, um, you know, one of my really nice dressy outfits. I would probably wear khakis and a polo or a button down, uh, personally. 
but that tells something about yourself to the people interviewing you. But if you're going for a job at a bank, yes, that is when you might be wearing your suit or your really nice uh, Sunday best. Interviews always have questions. That is one of the things that makes it an interview. Yes, you do have questions in your everyday general interactions, but pretty much it, an interview's purpose is to ask questions and get questions answered. So all interviews involve questions and answers, answers, and they can play multiple roles. And this seven minute Larry King video, it is over here. So here's where this lecture video will be. And the videos from this chapter are right here. So you can just click on and go through and watch those. You can pause right now and watch that if you want and then go through to that. Or you can just watch them all at once. It really doesn't make a difference to me on which order you watch them in. So, so there are some traditional forms of interviewing and some more non-traditional forms of interviewing. So traditional forms of uh, interviewing are information giving interviews. So when the two parties are taking part in an orientation session, a training session, coaching sessions, instructing something, briefing sessions, and the purpose is to exchange information. So if you go to a training at work, that it could potentially be an information giving interview. If you are part of a press briefing, and you are giving out that information. That is an information giving interview. Um, you have information gathering interviews and these are honestly, they're very, very similar to an extent. So they occur whenever two parties take part in surveys, exit interview, research sessions, investigations, journalistic interviews, and so forth. Um, you will probably mix up information gathering and information giving, but honestly, it really just depends on which side of the table, so to say, that you're on. So if you are a journalist attending a press briefing about an event or issue, then you are gathering. But if you are the one who is behind the table on that talking about the issue, then you are giving. So they're kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, but the interviewer's purpose is to gather accurate, insightful information through the use of questions. So a lot of the times your questions are created before you go into these situations, but sometimes they can be thought of uh, up on the spot like Larry King does. He thinks of his questions more so on the spot to dig more deeply into what people are saying and thinking about. Focus group interviews, these are always kind of fun and interesting. Um, like I said, there's a video on that. If you'd like to go watch it, you can pause. I'm sure you guys don't want to see my double thumbs up smiley face on your pause videos, um, but I have to amuse myself somehow, right? Um, but focus group, six to 10, similar but unrelated interviewees with a single interviewer and you're concentrating on a specific issue or concern. So when companies are trying out a new product or a new TV show, they tend to get focus groups. So if your target demographic is, um, you know, unmarried men between the ages of 18 and 25, you're going to look for, you know, a group of six to 10 men who are unmarried between the ages of 18 and 25. You can choose uh, focus groups based on pretty much any demographic because we can get information about any demographic. Maybe you want, um, you know, middle income, unmarried white women. You have enough information to get a focus group and say, okay, do middle income, unmarried white women between the ages of, you know, 25 and 35 like this TV show. Okay, great. They love it. We're going to put it out and target the ads towards them so that they watch it. as I put a piece of ice in my mouth, sorry. So selection interviews. So basically a job interview, you're trying to select the best applicant. So these occur between a recruiter 
and someone who applied for a job or a position within an organization. So you have your recruiter sitting across the table from you or the HR manager or the person who would be your supervisor. Maybe you have all of them, maybe it's a panel interview with you sitting on the other side of the table and they are asking you questions to determine, are you going to be a good fit for this position, for this organization and the kind of culture we have here, so on. Um, and then you have placement interviews. Um, so maybe you already have a job in this organization. They already said, okay, we really like this person, we wanna hire them, um, but where is the best place to put them at within the organization because maybe you have different skills or maybe they have multiple positions open that you happen to be qualified for. So where is this person going to fit the best? Maybe they'd work best in IT because that's, you know, they were talking with the IT people and they got along really, really well. But maybe they'll work better over here with these other people who they worked really well with as well. So placement is when you are already within there and maybe they're trying to find another spot for you. And then of course you have the selection interview of like a job interview. And you have performance reviews. So maybe it's you, maybe you have an annual performance review where your supervisor comes in and says, Hey, you know, so-and-so has been really doing great with this particular thing, but they really need to work on this part. So part of our performance reviews at the college is student evaluations. So we know what we can do better next year, what we can try to work on with our teaching skills. So we are to coach people, or they are coaching people on what is good and what should be continued. So, you know, maybe they're really personable or they're really good about giving feedback, or maybe they're really good at doing X, Y, Z things specific to their job and to set goals for future performance or things that could be improved upon. Um, there's counseling interviews. So when an interviewee has a personal or professional problem. So this is counseling, this is, yeah, therapists use these counseling interviews. So the interviewer is trying to help the interviewee get insights into a problem and offer some possible ways of dealing with it, though the interviewer isn't going to deal with the problem themselves. They are trying to find, they're trying to help the interviewee find a good way to deal with said problem themselves. Um, and persuasion interviews, we've all been a part of these. So when someone's trying to sell you shoes or a car or insert whatever else here, they're trying to get you to buy perfume at the mall. They are trying to persuade you to do something. They're trying to alter your thoughts of saying, I don't need, you know, a pair of $150 shoes to, no, you really do need this pair of $150 shoes. Um, or to reinforce the thinking of, eh, my shoes are kind of getting a little old. Maybe I do need new shoes. Yes, you do need new shoes and you need these shoes right here. And then the action of, hey, Yes, sign right here. You've now bought those $150 shoes or you know, you've now purchased your bright shiny new car or whatever else to try to convince you to do. Or this could even be if they're trying to persuade you to vote for a specific person uh, in elections or even just trying to persuade you to vote. Saying, hey, are you gonna go vote in the student council elections? No, well you should because of X, Y, Z or we'd really love it if you did. Um, and here's some more non-traditional forms of interviewing. So all those ones we just talked about are all traditional forms of interviewing. And these next ones are non-traditional forms of interviewing because they are adding in technology to this. And with everything that's been going on in the world, you know, since March, COVID, obviously technology has become a really big part of a lot of our lives because we've been you know, potentially in isolation, not being able to talk to people face to face as much as we used to. And, you know, if we're trying to find a job, a lot of these job interviews are probably going to be through technology. Um, and also we always get those like telemarketer phone calls where I'd saying, hey, you should do this or go out and vote for so-and-so because you're on the party calling list or whatever. 
Um, but there's telephone interviews and some of the benefits of telephone interviews are they save time and they are relatively inexpensive because you can just go through the phone book and you know, have your random number sampler and they'll pick out 500 numbers for you to call. Um, but it's, you know, it's cheap to do that and it doesn't take very long. It's not as long as having to go drive out to 500 people's houses and hand them a survey and wait. They can just do the survey over the phone and you can fill in their answers and then boom, it's all bueno. Um, is there the cons of that? No, but some of the cons of telephone interviewing are Nowadays, if you don't have the number in your phone, this, the automatic spam filter might just filter it out. And honestly, how many people of our generation answer the phone when an unknown number calls them? Like, honestly, unless I'm expecting a call or the numbers in my contacts, I just, I don't answer my cell phone if I don't know who it is. So I think people tend to be moving away from telephone interviews for surveys and stuff like that. Um, moving away from telephone job interviews now that we have that two-way video technology like this on Zoom, woohoo, um, and Skype and stuff. So you probably won't see telephone interviews um, much anymore, and I think probably in five or ten years you won't really see them at all because it's all just going to be done through the internet. Two-way video technology. Once again, if you'd like to pause and watch the video, it is right here. So how to ace a Skype interview. Um, but obviously two-way video technology like Skype and Zoom, we've all been you probably using it a lot over the past couple months, at least I know I have. Um, but with this, you really need to be aware of how you look and like what is in your view. So I can kind of see over here, you can see a little bit of my laundry room closet, like you can see the TV and the guitar in the background and the pictures on the wall. I could put a background behind it so it's less distracting, um, but you shouldn't be looking at me. You should be looking at the, uh, the PowerPoint. So, um, but it is something to think about. So what's behind you? Um, how are you sitting, your body movement? Like, are you sitting up here and like all curled up in the chair while you're doing your job interview over Skype or, are you sitting up nice and proper? Do you have good lighting? Or do you have bad lighting? Um, are you maintaining eye contact? Are you looking into the camera? Are you looking at yourself over here on the screen, like right over here in the corners where I am? So I can either be looking at myself, I can be looking at the screen that I'm talking off of, or I could be looking up at the video camera. And there's distinct little differences in all of those. Your facial expressions, if someone says something weird, and like you're on the phone with them, they can't see you go like, but if you're on a video call, people can see those faces and they can stop them and screenshot them and make memes out of you. Please don't make memes out of me. But if you do, I want to see them. We can vote on the best one for the class. Um, so you just need to be aware of what's visible to the other party when you are using this two-way video technology, especially for live interviews and stuff because like I can always go back and I can re-record this video as many times as I want um, but if it's live I don't really get that second chance. Email. Also we, we don't really see many email interviews at this point like I don't think I've ever really gotten a survey in an email unless it's been from someone from a school sending out an email about XYZ for a survey. It does happen but it's mainly only for surveys. Um, but it is handy to send out surveys or to get some preliminary information from people. So let's say I'm gonna go interview with, you know, John Doe over at John Deere Tractors. I'm probably gonna send an email beforehand and get some preliminary information that maybe I couldn't get off of the internet and get to know them a little bit more before I go and sit down and talk to them face to face for this interview for the newspaper or for the interview for insert whatever here. You probably use email more to get preliminary information for journalistic style interviews, but you can definitely email back and forth between job interviews to get more information as well you should probably have as much information as you can going into a job interview. 
no such, okay, there is such a thing as too much information, but it's hard to get to that point. Um, webinars, everybody loves webinars. Is this technically a webinar? No, I think this is just technically an online lecture, oh, but I guess lectures listed there. Everything can go into any category, basically. But yes, webinars, you can do them live, you can do them pre-recorded, but you know, if you're having a conference, especially all the conferences that have happened since March, they've pretty much all been webinars and internet based. You'll probably have a lot of classes this semester where your lectures are posted on Canvas or they're conducted through Zoom, um, whether they be live or asynchronous. Training sessions, we've all had to sit through those, you know, little short six minute long training session videos, but there's like 35 of them and you're just like, oh my gosh, when will this ever end? Also a webinar. Seminars, workshops, teaching you how to do different things, all webinars. But like I said, super quick overview of different, you know, just basics of interviewing. But uh, overall, internet-based, non-traditional interviews are getting a lot more popular um, from moving on from 2020 and on, and they'll probably just be getting more and more popular as time goes on, just because they're really, really convenient. Traditional interviews are really nice because you can sit face-to-face -face with someone and get to know them, and you can look at their body language, and their nonverbals and how they're saying things. You get immediate feedback, um, but you know it's a lot cheaper. It's more efficient to do things through two-way video technology. But if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email, shoot me a message on Canvas. Um, I will try to get to emails within 24 hours, Canvas messages within 24 hours. If I haven't got to back to you within like the day, 24 hour period, shoot me another one and double check how my name is spelled if you're sending it through email. Because <laughs> I've had a lot of people who've said, Miss Becker, I sent you like three emails and I'm just like, nope. And we go back and look and they spelled my first name wrong. Um, but just double check or copy and paste it from Canvas and we will do the best we can, all right? So I will hopefully see you soon. Stay safe, stay out of trouble as much as you can. And if you have any questions, please just do not hesitate to contact me at all, whether through email, up in my office, whatever, I am here. So we'll see ya.